How y'all doing? <laughs> How y'all feeling? Um, so we're going to be racking to 10 orderly, um, despicable live TV moments. So uh, let's get straight to it. Katie versus Colleen, loose women. Do you ever regret saying it or feel you should apologize? No, I don't regret saying anything that I've said because I'd stand by it. Following her stint on The Apprentice, Katie Hopkins unfortunately became famous, gaining a massive platform and no shortage of followers. She's made her name being as objectionable as possible, and that behaviour didn't stop when she started attacking Linda Nolan during Ooh. Nolan's stint on Celebrity Big Brother. When my sister was in Big Brother, you constantly, every day, day in, day out, went on about, I wish she'd put her ugly fat arm away. She was then brought brought onto Loose Women to answer Colleen Nolan's questions about why Hopkins said the things she did. No, I'm going to answer. I am going to answer if we let me answer, of course. Um, and the thing I would say is, you know, there are hard things that are said. I wasn't the biggest fan of your sister. No. She continued to be rude, refusing to apologise for her claims that Linda Nolan had poor personal hygiene. She then offended everybody else on the panel, including stalwart panellist Janet Street Porter. People like that. Don't, they, they don't like themselves. She is. She got to be the most miserable person in the world because why would you? I understand you don't like people. I understand you're not fond of somebody, but she's she's doing it too. She's doing too much. <laughs> you're going too far with this. No wonder I she get was it. never invited back. No, you haven't answered like my the question. Way she you haven't. In the house. I didn't like the no, way she you haven't answered my question. Do you him? think talk, telling a cancer victim that she's got gro uh, droopy breasts is okay. a constructive, helpful criticism? Fainting fit. No, she didn't. She said that. I'm a celebrity. Get me out oh of here. God. Years later, and the cat's out of the bag. Alison Hammond, also in the jungle that year, revealed that even at the time she believed Gillian was faking her fall. Well, what were you thinking? I was actually laughing inside, if I'm honest with you. But I, was, I knew it was live. It was a live trial. In the notorious clip, McKeith collapsed after being voted by the public to do yet another live trial, which they were doing because she was so awful at them and made such a fuss. We'll explain exactly what's going on, OK? Oh, 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 oh. Let's get Bob in. Bob, Bob. OK, bring the oxygen in, please. More despicable than the actual fainting incident was the context around McKeith and all the dodgy things she's done on pre-recorded television, examining people's poo and lying to the country about whether she was a doctor. Oh, did you know that was a load of like, nonsense? There's no way she really fainted. She went mad at me saying that, by the way. <laughs> did she? She'd already been paid by ITV. She should have just quit. Nick Ferrari's airline. That's messed morning. up. He's often controversial during his LBC broadcasts, but also features as a familiar face on This Morning. But I'd love to run an airline. I don't know about you. Here are some of the restrictions. Um, no babies or children who cry. In this broadcast from May 2024, Ferrari was on to discuss a new dog-friendly airline, Bark Air, that had just been launched. He went on to talk about what his dream airline would be like, rattling off his stringent I mean, I get it. Baby's gonna cry, dog's gonna bark. That's just how what this is what this is what they do. But if you're the type of person who just let it get to you that to that point, you might as well just try to spend extra money and try to get a I don't know, first class or get your own private jet. That probably will solve everything. I mean, Requirements. No flip flops. Your children and nobody what? with a peanut allergy. Right, and if you don't like peanuts, don't get on the plane either, because I do, and I can't eat them because someone's at the back of the plane is going to drop dead or something if I have a peanut. I don't quite oh know why. Oh my god! He says that it's his right to eat as many nuts as he wants, regardless of. It. Okay, if you want to eat all the nuts, that's so that's fine. But like I said, get your own private jet. I don't say why people complaining. You can't. You, you, these people. Yeah. They can't help themselves, you know, and you're saying they shouldn't be flying. If someone How has much a you get your private jet? So that's my airline. Oh, <laughs> where do I begin to start unpacking this? Hundreds of Ofcom complaints rolled in for this, and Dermot O'Leary was forced to apologize later on in the week and then do a special segment on serious nut allergies. Let's move on, thank you, Nicholas. <laughs> Meghan Markle, Good Morning Britain. There are dozens of despicable Piers Morgan moments out there, but not all of them happened live on TV. OK. I'm done with this. No, no, no. Sorry. No. Oh, uh, Sorry. So, do you know what? That's pathetic. You can trash me, maybe not my no, own no, no, I remember no, no, no. this. I remember this. Sorry. Can't this do is... this. 
I remember this. I remember this one. Absolutely diabolical behaviour. His rants about the Duchess of Sussex, however, did. She was a frequent punching bag for Morgan, as he accused her of smearing the royal family and disrespecting the British public time and time again. This is a two-hour trash-a-thon of our royal family, of the monarchy, of everything the Queen has worked so hard for. Everybody got bored of it. But From my understanding, I heard that he, I don't know how true it is, but they said he liked her or something like that. I don't know how true it is before. Like, I don't know if he met her in person and she turned him down. I don't know how true that is. Or maybe I'm getting story mixed up. Y'all correct me if I'm wrong. But Piers kept like, on going. Like, he's holding some type of grudge against man, her. Alex Beresford told him to give it a rest. Like a child throwing his toys out That's of the tram. That's true. Piers she gave it a rest. And like, announced he was quitting GMB entirely the same week. It was then up to Susanna Reid to lead us all in a little Piers Morgan tribute. But now Piers has decided to leave the program. Some of you may cheer and others will boo. Alex Reed <laughs> gets dumped. I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. Now you knew that your partner Alex was flying out today and we've all seen the stories in the papers. So can you understand why people might think you'd, have, you'd planned this in advance? Video is when terrible. Katie Price, better known as Jordan at this time, appeared on the 2009 edition of I'm a Celebrity, she was in a highly publicised relationship with MMA fighter Alex Reed, but their relationship was definitely tumultuous, ending for good in 2011 though not before they'd already bounced back from this scandal. That's another thing, I've done a lot of reflecting, I think it's best that um, I'm on my own. I just, I just don't well, want to be in a relationship. Price, unlike Gillian McKeith, actually did quit when the trials got too much for her. This led to allegations that she'd done it on purpose to stage a lavish proposal with Reed. When this was put to her though, she announced that they were over, live on TV. Um, as I of... hope we can remain friends as of I came out. Okay, so, yeah. so, so no more. So you and Alex are split now? I'm not with him, no. A chill morning. Good morning, Britain. He's yeah. Sweeney. Shout out to him. He's refused to come on our programme so far. Sweeney, shout out to him. Say, come on, good morning, Britain, Prime Minister, if you get the chance. Give him the full barrels. On the 2019 campaign trail, Boris Johnson was in Yorkshire to talk to some milkmen about the morning's delivery. But throughout the election, Johnson had consistently refused to appear on Good Morning Britain to be grilled by Piers Morgan, despite promising multiple times to do so. GMB sent correspondent Jonathan Swain to talk to Johnson, only for him to be told where to stick it by one of the Prime Minister's bodyguards. Morning, Prime Minister. Everybody come on uh, Good Morning Britain, Prime Minister. Mm. <gasps> oh. Oh. This all happened. Damn! <laughs> live on air, including the swearing, and Johnson promptly hid in the big milk fridge to avoid any difficult questions from Piers and Susanna. Considering he was trying to get people to vote for him, this was truly outrageous. Right, he's been taken inside into the freezer. He's gone into the Excuse fridge. Me. There's a bunker. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet, heroic work, had so Spin to win this morning. We'll pay your energy bills. We've got a thousand pounds as well. So this is energy bills. I think for four months, if it stops on that. 2022 was the year of the high energy bills, one that will go down in infamy. In all its wisdom, ITV decided it was going to help out the great British public by offering money to pay our energy bills as a prize on this morning's spin okay. to win game. How are your how how are your energy bills? Are you a bit worried about it all? Oh, major. Yeah. This was nightmarish, emblematic Why? of the state the country has found itself in throughout this decade. Damn. Your energy bill. Oh my God! Thank we're, you. We're paying your energy bill for four months. Oh, fantastic. Though Alex from Enfield seemed happy enough to win money off his energy bills, we can't help but think he'd probably have preferred a big chunk of cash to spend on what he liked. It was heinous to see ITV doing more to help people than the government was. Yeah. Concrete. I'm not going to lie. That is, that is sad. That is sad. That you got to, you know, these, pe these people have to help you with your, you know, electricity bill, your energy bill, like you call it. But, um... Yeah, that's just sad. Insulate Britain, rub a lot of the government should the do wrong better way with their tactics, but at least their arguments make sense. How is it sustainable if you're killing trees? Because it's regenerative, you can grow trees. 
Right. Not so for those on the other side, however, as shown when Mike Graham got Insulate Britain spokesperson Cameron Ford on talk radio TV. Graham was clearly arguing in bad faith and trying to trip Cameron up, going after him when he said that he was a carpenter and wanting to know whether trees are a sustainable building material. Well, you can you can grow all sorts of things, can't you? Well, you can't grow concrete. You can. Two years later, and Graham reappeared to deliver a new treatise that scientists have been hard at work trying to grow concrete in labs, meaning that he was right, apparently. See you, Cameron. Cheerio. That was Cameron. Uh, he grows trees and then cuts them down and then makes things from them. Tetris. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is that the way he said it? It's making me laugh. <laughs> Is that the way he said it? Now Tetris has long been touted as a video game that He's just can't be, funny. be beaten because it just goes on and on. Jean Seca found herself in a spot of bother in 2024 when she tried to get to grips with the Tetris kill screen. Since Tetris is essentially an infinite game, the only way to beat it is to reach a high enough level that the game completely breaks. Mm. <gasps> oh my god! Oh. Why didn't it fall? A 13-year-old boy, Willis Gibson, became the first human to reach the kill screen, i.e. the first person to ever beat Tetris. Seca was... Oh, he beat it. But why didn't it fall? Usually, this is supposed to fall right here. This right here. Is I'm it stuck? Any of this, though. I don't know. I don't As a know. mother, I would just say step away from the screen, go outside, get some fresh air. Beating Tetris is not a life goal. Not understanding the weight of Gibson's achievements, I get what she's saying, no. I understand. Air, suggesting that he should stop playing video games and go outside. Well done, that child. Please go out and get some fresh air. Eamon Holmes blames the victim. I get it what she's saying, but you'd be surprised. There are kids out there making money off of playing video games and recording it. They making money, you know, and being outside is not safe like it used to. But at the same time, I understand what she's saying. Like, you know, get a little fresh air, you know, for full of walk, you know. I get it. This morning. Go back and look. How many times a day? That's what we're asking. At least five. Public opinion has certainly turned against Eamon Holmes recently, with people re-examining a lot of his older gaffes in the wake of the news that he and Ruth Langsford have split. In one 2011 moment, he appeared to blame the victim of a sexual assault for her decision not to take a taxi one night, something not everyone can afford. Um, have you never thought of making a business of it? And what asked charging for charging for it. He also suggested to one woman, Crystal Warren, that if she enjoys sex so much, she should start charging people, which she obviously took great offense to. If you're not particularly selective, what, what I'm saying is, why wouldn't it why wouldn't it be a business to you? The, then it becomes a business. Um, and then I become maybe like a robot. Then there was the time he seemed to tout five. That was such an awkward conversation. Wow. G conspiracy uh, theories, which, according to him, led to his hell? eventual dismissal from people. ITV entirely. But what I don't accept is mainstream media immediately slapping that down as not true when they don't know it's not true. Let us know in the comments which horrendous. This was crazy. This was so awkward. <laughs> oh my god. This was crazy. Oh my god. Comment below. Let me know how y'all feel about this one. That's all I gotta say. Just comment below. Let me know how y'all feel about this. Uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel. So go down here and subscribe. And I'll see y'all later. <laughs> Peace.